Good morning, Diana hey. Corker. Thank you for having me again. And, and welcome back to to America. How was the Thanks. holiday season for you? The little vacation to Australia was amazing. Um, just, you know, I hadn't seen my family in two years. Wow. So that was a bit rough, to be honest. So I, I didn't I, I didn't realize that my homesickness was was getting sort of so bad until I was almost home. And then, yeah, I'm like, OK, can't let it go that long again. So yeah. but good to be back. And nice to not be in rain and cold for the holidays anymore. That, that was true. I got plenty of vitamin D, which I needed. <laughs> Lots of energy. Yeah, exactly. You just released, show off your... Record. You just released. I just released last week, right? Yes, this is the second copy I've ever touched. So, <laughs> it is that. New. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> it is very that exciting. New. How, how do you feel about it? Um, I feel really good about it. You know, sometimes you kind of you do so much work in preparing for this and for recording it and putting the songs together and all the rest of it that by the time that you've sort of finished it, you're ready to do another one. It's like, oh, well, let's go record another one because this one's done. But now it's all the fun stuff and meeting people and promoting. So, yeah. And, and talking about it. and Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. Yeah. The, as I just mentioned to you, one of the things that I want to talk about this year at CRS is the concept of creative courage. Mm -hmm. And it's the perfect time because you just yeah. released a work. When you release something that's that personal of yourself out into the world, what feelings does that bring up? Well, you know what? I'm going to tell you the truth, which I think some artists don't say because they're scared to. Um, I had a very interesting relationship with the release of this album. And uh, artists can relate to this. It is similar to having a baby, although I haven't had a baby. But in terms of putting something out there and then and nurturing it, and it's like it's a massive thing that you have to do. There's an extraordinary amount of work put into putting it together, recording it and everything, as I said before. And then the work doesn't finish. You know, it's it, you know, like when you have a baby, you then it's like oh my gosh now the now the hard work begins mm -hmm. um, the relationship with this album release was actually difficult for me um, and I don't think a lot of people say that they kind of say I'm excited and and, and and I am and I'm so extraordinarily blessed and feel um, and feel incredibly positive and everything has been so positive around mm -hmm. it as well so um, it's it's all been amazing, but at the same time, I actually have been terrified. So there's been a lot of anxiety. There's been a lot of what do I think that I'm doing? Like I might have been able to hit number one in Australia, but there's 350 million people in America. How am I going to get my music to 350 million people? So the pressures have been extraordinary um, this time round, and uh, and in some ways, um, yeah, terrifying. And I've had to I've had to cross a lot of um, a lot of difficult speed bumps, so to speak, emotionally, which is very odd. And um, uh, but it's been great, and I do it. And I, you know, there's there's nothing that I haven't stopped, which is great. Right, so I, I didn't right. stop and go, no, can't do that. So everything that's been put in front of me that I got terrified about, I have I've been able to sort of conquer. And I'm just hoping I can continue to do that. But <laughs> I feel good now. I feel absolutely great now. But it's been scary. But it yeah. is scary. It is scary. I, again, as I said prior. Doing something like this makes you vulnerable, yeah. which to me means being courageous. Absolutely, yeah. How do you handle that part of it? That that push and pull between I don't, I, being vulnerable doesn't feel comfortable. Yeah. Ever. Um, but you want to be courageous. You want to build your career. So where? Absolutely. How do you navigate that? I think for me. Um, from a creative standpoint, in terms of receiving criticism, which I guess is what you're saying, is putting yourself out there. It is. It it's is courageous. Part of it, because you know it's coming. Absolutely, and not everybody's going to like my music. Um, right. The, the one thing that I am blessed about um, is that I naturally am totally okay with criticism. Um, I. I thank my parents for that because uh, first of all they never wrapped me in cotton wool um, we also did a lot of little talent quests country music talent quests around Australia when I was growing up so I learned to lose I learned how to lose properly and to right. and gracefully lose and to me you know I would say that I won 50% of those competitions and lost 50% so there was a real balance and I feel like in terms of criticism I've always been pretty well prepared and a lot of it has just rolled off my back sometimes it'll get to me depends what's going on or what it is in particular that they've said that they've said or who said it right. I'm not saying that I'm like 
man of steel when it comes to that. <laughs> but I am incredibly tolerant to criticism. Um, and I'm, I'm understanding of people not liking music as, as well as the people that do. Um, but I think that the biggest thing for me really is to be able to creatively continue when there are so many, uh, there are so many pressures. So it's like, so for me, I think I explained to you before that I was, uh, I'm camping my way around America because I'm trying to make that budget that my label have um, stretch even further than yeah. than uh, the average artist would would stretch it, I guess. And I'm I'm just trying. I'm saying, you know what? I'm going to take that amount of money, and I'm going to stretch it over triple the amount of time because I need that time. And that's the stuff that for me are, are the big hurdles that I have to get over is to I swallow my pride a lot, swallowing pride and starting again. And um, you know, they're they're the big challenges. I think. Yeah. yeah. How do you filter that feedback? Because you can't let everything in. Yeah. But you have to let in the constructive criticism. So Absolutely. how do you filter what you listen to? I think if the same thing, if it's just something that it depends who it comes from. Once again, because there, cause Absolutely. some we have to respect the person it comes from. Yeah. If I respect the person it comes from and I love what they do, I'll definitely listen to it. If something is said more than once, I will definitely take that and work with it. Um, and that's probably when it, it hits me the most as well. So if something's said three times, it's like, okay. Yeah, it's a pattern. And, yes, yeah. it's a pattern. Then I believe it and I go, okay, oh, that hurt a little bit, but it only hurt because I know that it, it may be true. If it's, if, it's more than, if it's more than once, then it, it may be true. That's so, a really good point. Yeah, and, that's, yeah. and I think that's when I do get affected. But if there's just some random comment that made that I've never heard before, or whatever, it's pretty easy to forget about, to be honest. Or just, you know, if it's on email or if it's on, everything's digital these days, so it's just like, yeah, the YouTube delete. Comments <laughs> 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 delete. <laughs> the, you've already touched on it, but I want to dig into a little, a little bit more, the idea of kind of starting over mm -hmm. and having to work from, you know, here's my budget, yeah. and here's what I can do, and here's what I can reasonably do that need to stay patient and build something up. So yeah. How do you, because it's, you know, when I work with artists, yeah. what, one of the most difficult things is patience. Yes. Because it's never quick enough. And I think it's probably for that in most people's careers, no matter what your career is. You yeah, know, absolutely. You know, in a law firm, you're, you haven't made partner yet and that's yeah. bothering you. So it's, it's that need to stay patient in our lives. How do you handle that part of it? I think because I had a, a pretty good career in Australia, I'm aware of how much work it takes and how long it takes to get there. There's definitely no um, disillusion when it comes to that for me in America and starting and starting out almost all over again. Um, I'm really happy with the success that I've had so far has blown my mind. It's actually not what I've expected. I'm naturally a pretty impatient person. Um, for some reason, I'm pretty patient with my music. Um, it's when I see something that is in comparison, like if there's a comparison somewhere, like, well, this uh, person yeah. managed to do this in this amount of time, and it's like, well, was that money, or were they better, or am I, you know, not that not that I really believe that there is better or worse in this business, because there's a, you know, it's creative, yeah. but, you know, is there something that they have that, you know, that I'm missing out on, or whatever the case may be. Um, I, uh, I don't think, unless there's a comparison, I don't really get impatient, but... Um, I get exhausted more so than impatient. So it's not as though I feel like it should be coming sooner. I just in some cases go, am I going to be alive when it finally <laughs> I still don't want to do this. But, uh, yeah. So it's more about surviving. <laughs> just staying the course until yeah, you can get exactly. there. Exactly. I'm looking for a really specific example in this question. So give mm -hmm. me something where you didn't stay patient. Okay. Or you didn't. You made a decision that you can now see was you know, the wrong decision, wasn't the right thing to do, and what led to that situation? I can give you. I can give you a very specific example of that um, uh, very quickly, and th this is swallowing my pride because this is probably the first time this has been said public and um, exclusive. <laughs> exclusive. <laughs> but. Um, I don't. I don't regret a lot in my career because I do feel like whatever decisions I made at the time, 
were the correct decisions um, that led me to a certain point. So I'm a big believer in, you know, the butterfly effect and how everything is meant to roll. And so even your mistakes end up being the right decision in the end. And yeah, because if you learn something from it, it wasn't a bad thing. Right? Exactly. So I don't necessarily know whether this is a regret so much now that I'm in Nashville because it's kind of irrelevant. But um, I was uh, I was told... I was told by, I, I had a, a great agent in Australia who took really good care of me and, and got me a lot of gigs and, and I was with him for an extended period of time and um, and, and he was great. But um, when I, I left my record label in Australia and I was sort of transitioning to go to the state, to come to the States, but there was still sort of that gap of maybe um, two years that I needed to sort of take care of in Australia. and. Um, I had another agent come to me and said, well, you know, can I take care of you because I'll also take care of you internationally as well. Um, so me going, okay, well, my scope is international and my my current agent or my agent at the time or existing agent was not interested in international and he told me that very specifically. Yeah. So he knew that when, he always knew that I was going to go to Nashville, yeah. but he said that, you know, um, when, when that time comes, I won't be able to take care of that. And that was fine. Yeah. Um, but basically I still had a couple of years before I was leaving to go to Nashville due to contracts and things. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I had another agent came to, come to me and said, well, why don't you change over to me now? Because I'll take care right. of everything. We'll get you to Nashville sooner. And and, um, and I made that choice and it was actually a mistake. Uh, so I, you know, I, I suffered, the live, the live business um, suffered drastically because I thought this guy was going to, I, I thought this agent and this team was actually going to get me to, um, to Nashville a lot sooner. I was going to be, you know, getting gigs internationally a lot sooner when ultimately I just should have, you know, stayed on the, the path that I was probably on. But I mean, you know, it wasn't a huge loss, but I did regret leaving that agent. I did. Yeah. That was the one regret that I had. And yeah. you feel that was out of either trusting the wrong person in a way, like trusting it was, it was trusting the wrong they person. they do, did, or yeah. partly also that impatience of, it was both. Well, I know what I want, mm -hmm. I, I want to get there. Yeah, it was. I think it was both. It was, we can get you gigs in Nashville and and in a, in America a lot sooner, and uh, if you if you sign with us now and you know and I didn't think about it either, which which is right. often the case with me, and I don't <laughs> I don't regret that. I do go a lot on gut instincts, yeah. and I probably went against my gut instinct though. Yeah, so there uh, there sometimes just leaving somebody too soon or whatever the yeah. case may be. But that's, yeah, that was definitely that fueled was by impatience. Yeah, Nashville, 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 Nashville. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta go, I gotta go. Yeah. The question I always end with in uh, these kinds of situations is um, if you had to put together the soundtrack to your life of songs that have been with you, oh. either, you know, your own, other people's, what types of songs would be on that record? Uh, uh, I Hope You Dance, Leanne Womack. Uh, that was always the one that I would listen to if, like, if I felt like I was trying to, you know, push things uphill. Uh, Just to see you smile, um, believe it, uh, by Tim McGraw, which I know everybody loves that song, and it's a great song. But I actually used to the production was the thing for me. So the instrumentation in that in that particular recording was a huge drive for me to get to Nashville. It was like all these guys are Nashville players. I'm going to Nashville because yeah. I want that. Um, uh, oh my gosh, it, it's it's kind of endless. Um, a bunch know, of Oli a question. bunch of Olivia Newton-John songs. Uh, of course, yeah, Australian. yeah, they, exactly. They wouldn't let you back in the country if you didn't. I know, right? <laughs> exactly, or a Keith Urban song or something. But uh, there was always a country song. I think there was, in terms of a soundtrack, I love all genres of music, and I, I write a lot of pop music outside of my country career, yeah. and I love pop music. But if you were to really put the soundtrack of my life. Um, down on a CD, it'd probably be almost all country. Yeah. So I think that the whole, you know, real life that comes into country music infiltrates into that and yeah. there's a reason for it, yeah. All right, thank you so much. Thank you.